in the last stream, we were working on setting up this massive structure here with all of the dragon bees, awakened draconium bees, draconium bees, and wither bees to allow us to get dragon eggs, awakened draconium, regular draconium, and nether stars much, much faster because we needed a staggering number of those items specifically in order to get their associated singularities, which of course are required to make the ultimate singularities, which we need if we're going to get all of the creative items here and complete the pack. Now between streams, and in fact, after the last stream, what I went ahead and did is I set up multiple more of these modular routers. Each one of these has some distributor modules in to pull from multiple different apiaries. And essentially here, we just have all of these modular routers pulling from all of the new apiaries that we built down and into all of these centrifuges. As I said, at the end of the last stream, I have also gone ahead and picked up quite a lot of the non awakened draconium dragon draconium and with a bees. And I've put all of those bees over into here, mostly to try and speed up the processing of the, all of the combs that we set up in the last stream, because we didn't really need any more Invar, Electrum, any of those kind of ingots that we already had the required amounts of. And so right now, most of these centrifuges back here are kind of just working on Wither combs, Draconium combs, and Awakened Draconium combs. And that's worked out pretty well for us. It's been almost four days since the end of the last stream, and we are now very close on most of these resources. We've got 168,000 dragon eggs, which is more than enough. We've got 400,000 draconium blocks, which is way more than enough. We've got 121,000 awakened draconium blocks, which is not quite enough. And then we have 265,000 another star blocks, which again is more than enough. And so the only thing we're really shy on right now out of the new bees that we set up in the last stream is Awakened Draconium, which I'm fairly certain will come in slowly but surely over the course of the next few episodes, and I'm hopeful shouldn't really be an issue for us down here. Uh, these front five apiaries have been working solely on dragon eggs, and as you can see here, we aren't really producing enough combs for it to saturate these five. I did go ahead and take the ender bee out, so it is just dragon combs in here. The ender bee is no longer down because we do have, I believe, more than enough ender pearls at this point in time. Yeah, we've got 100 and 67,000, way more than the 141,000 that we need. And so at this point now, in terms of the singularities that we need to work on, these are the five that we have left. We have the Bone Singularity, the Prismarine Singularity, and the Conduit Singularity. Those three are mostly just crafting operations. As I mentioned at the end of the last stream, we have to craft all of the Prismarine Shards into Prismarine Blocks. The same is true with Bones. We have to turn our Bones into Bone Meal, and then our Bone Meal into Bone Blocks. And then the Conduit Singularity is just a case of crafting our Nautilus Shells with our Hearts of the Sea, all of which we have, by the way. We've got enough Nautilus Shells. We've got enough Hearts of the Sea. We just have to craft them all together and then export them to their Singularity form. The only one left that poses any real difficulty here is the bitumen singularity. This one right here is going to be a bit of a pain in the backside because we need, of course, 3,000 of these bitumen blocks per bitumen singularity. Uh, and that means, of course, much like with everything else, we need 141,000 blocks of bitumen to get all of the required singularities here. Each one of these requires nine bitumen, and each one of these is made by running bitumen ascend through a centrifugal separator. And this bitumen ascend is what we have in our system. Now, the problem here isn't the centrifugal separator. This is actually surprisingly easy for us to make. It needs one compass, it needs one redstone flux coil, and we of course need two Constantin gears here. Constantin we should have in abundance thanks to the Constantin B. We do, we've got 2.4 million Constantin, and in a previous episode we did set up our multi-server press over here, and so getting Constantin gears is going to be pretty straightforward. The trouble comes just in the quantity of bitumen that we need, because the centrifugal separator by default is not very fast, and even if you speed it up, it's nowhere near fast enough on its own to get us the amount of bitumen that we need in a reasonable period of time. And so I think, much like we did in the last episode when we set up a staggering number of apiaries, we're going to have to set up quite a lot of fully sped up centrifugal separators if we want to be able to process all of this bitumen ascend into all of the bitumen that we need in a reasonable period of time. To uh, demonstrate this, if we go ahead and throw this down, let's say we're right about here for now, and I put this in, by default, if we look in JI here, we can see that this uses 20,000 redstone flux to complete the operation, and over here, without any upgrades at all in the augment slot on the right, this uses 20 redstone flux per tick. 
If you crunch the numbers on that, it means that one piece of bitumen ascend takes 50 seconds, almost a full minute to get turned into bitumen. And we need, again, like 1.3 million bitumen. Now, the good news is that you do get a 50% chance to get a second piece of bitumen. So you're guaranteed to get one piece. There's an additional chance of 50% to get a second piece. And so on a large scale, that means that for every bitumen sand that we process, we're going to get about 1.5 bitumen. And so that means that we need approximately 800,000, maybe 850,000 bitumen of sand. That's how many we have to process in order to get all of the bitumen we need. If we were to try and do that with just this one centrifugal separator, again, crunching the numbers, it would take over a year to do. It would take like 450 days to do, which is, of course, far too long. Thankfully, there are a couple of things that we can do to make this faster. The first thing we can do is upgrade the machine itself. To do that, we need the integral components from thermal expansion. There are three tiers. There is the hardened, the reinforced, and the resonant. We want the resonant here. This is going to make the machine as fast as possible. I do think it's going to be worth teaching our system how to make this. I'm going to go ahead and incurred a pattern for all three of these. And the only downside here is that all three of them do require gears. The alloys are not going to be a problem. Invar, uh, Electrum, Enderium, and even Lumium and Signalum are all resources that we have in B form. So it's not going to be hard for us to get those resources. The only tricky bit is going to be turning them into gears because unfortunately in this pack, there's no gear crafting. You have to make the gears using either a multi-servo press or a smeltery. And of course, the multi-servo press, I think, is going to be our best bet for that. We also, I think at this point, are kind of out of space in our molecular assemblers. However, I do kind of also think at this point that we can probably take out these apiaries here and replace those with these new patterns for the integral components because I don't foresee us needing to craft any more apiaries. Maybe that's wishful thinking, but I'm fairly certain that, uh, that we should be good on the apiary front. It also does appear that we're actually kind of running out of space on our disk drives again here, which is also not ideal. It's not a huge problem because we can go ahead and take some rogue junk out here, and then we should be able to go ahead and request, say, another 16K storage component, which is going to let us make another 16K uh, drive if we make some more housing, which we actually have ready for us here. Now, in terms of making the gears automatically, that also should not be too difficult for us. It's just a case of requesting another ME interface, which start and it's done. Perfect. And just like with all of our other machines, of course, we can go ahead and place that down on top of our multi-servo press here. And if we grab some more ME cable, we can connect that up to our pre-existing network, hoping that we have enough channels, which I think we should do. We're still using dense cable to run over to here. But of course, this is going to allow us to put patterns into here to teach our system how to use the multi-servo press. Just like with the mechanism machines, I do believe here that we should be able to set this to orange and blue. So input and output, and then we can turn auto eject to on. That way, the multi-server press will put the items in, and then the machine will automatically send it back up to the ME interface, and that's going to complete the cycle. And so for us, it really should just be a case of making this point down, which again, might not be necessary, but I'm going to do it anyway. And then back over here, we just need to teach our system how to make gold gears using the multi-server press. One thing we do want to do is change to processing mode. And when you shift click the recipe in here, uh, oh, that's not going to shift click any. I was hoping it would. It's not the end of the world if we have to do it manually. It just means we have to say that for gold equals one gold gear. I'll bookmark these real quick. And then we can go gold gear and we can just drag that over into the recipe. Nice. And so I'm going to go ahead and teach my system how to make all of the different gears are required here. I think the only other two really are Signalum and Lumium, neither of which should be too difficult. We have the Signalum, and so one, two, three, four, we just swap the gold out here for Signalum, and we do the same again with the Signalum gear, drag that in from JEI, encode, and then, of course, last but not least, we do the exact same thing with one, two, three, four, Lumium, place that in, and then grab the Lumium gear from JEI, and at that point, we should be almost good to go in terms of just requesting a bunch of the resonant integral components. The final thing that I think we don't currently know how to make is hardened glass. Thankfully, the hardened glass here shouldn't be too difficult for us to teach. You can make it in an induction smelter with nether quartz, obsidian, and sand. However, given the number of resources we have and given how fast our auto crafting is, I think it is probably going to make a lot of sense to just teach it this recipe right here. 
Now to do that, we're gonna first of all need some more patterns. And for that, thankfully we do have some blank patterns here. We could always replace these ones that we already have though. We can just shift right click to clear those. Uh, we'll encode that. We are also gonna have to encode, and actually I want this to be regular quartz, not quartz dust. Let me quickly uh, re-encode that ideally with regular quartz. Our system does know how to make quartz dust, but it's just an extra unnecessary step. We'll re-encode that. And now all, oh no, whoops, we'll put that in there. Then we'll put this in here. You gotta do that in the right order. Otherwise it does not work. There we go. And now all we have to do is teach it the fire charge. Again, this step, not necessary if you want to use the induction smelter, but given that we have so much coal, so much blaze powder and so much gunpowder, I feel like we might as well. Chat is right as always. We do have to swap to crafting mode. Uh, you can't do this in processing mode. And so uh, let's quickly try that one more time. Let me shift click that in, swap that out for regular old nether quartz, boom and boom. And then we'll encode that. Fantastic, that is now in crafting mode. Good stuff. And then back over here, we need to find some slots for it. Let's put you in here and let's put the other one in up here. I also don't think we need the, uh, the fighter grower. And so now I think we might have everything we need to request some of these resonant integral components. It looks like we do. If we go ahead and hit start, we should start to see gears getting made over here. We do indeed. One of the first integral components that we get, I am going to put into this multi-server press because that's going to make it a whole heck of a lot easier for us to get more integral components going forward. And the other thing we're going to want to do here in terms of speeding up our centrifugal separator is we are going to want to look at getting some augments. Specifically, we want the flux linkage amplifier augment. This one right here is made with lead gears, electron plates, and a redstone flux coil. Again, I do think it's gonna be worth teaching our system how to make these because we're going to need a lot of them. Uh, speaking of which, let me get even more patterns requested here. We don't have the CPU space for it. I think over here, we are still using a CPU for crafting more glass bottles. I think at this point in time, we can probably quite safely turn that off because we really don't need any more dragon eggs. So we don't need to have glass bottles being made perpetually. It's also gonna save uh, our advanced smelting factory from constantly being filled with sand and it's gonna make it usable for us again as well, which is uh, also good. So let's go ahead and take this and we'll find a spot for that over in here. We could also look at adding another ME interface to our lineup over where we're crafting stuff. Specifically, I think we might be able to just throw one down like here. Does that work? And does that get connected to the setup? If I scroll down, it totally does. So we do have the channels for it. And that just allows us to pop this in like that. And this should automatically get access to these three molecular assemblers for any crafts that it needs to do. Cool. And so now that that is good to go, there's just two more crafts I think required as part of that. We need to teach our system how to make the lead gears, which is easy enough. We also need to teach it though, how to make the electron plates. That isn't a particularly difficult craft to do, but again, it's one that's gonna require another multi-server press, this time without the gear working die. And so much like we've got here, we're gonna need another multi-server press next to it without that gear working die in it to allow us to make those plates automatically for the flux linkage amplifiers. We do already though have these integral components. And so let's go ahead and drop one of those in here and one of those in here. That's gonna increase the base power usage from 20 redstone flux per tick up to 18. So we've already quadrupled the amount of power that is being used, which if we remember back to earlier, it takes 20,000 redstone flux to process one bitumen ascend and us quadrupling the amount of power that we use basically means that we quarter the amount of time. So currently we've managed to take it down from taking 400 and some days to taking about 100 days if we were to just use this centrifugal separator. However, again, we can take things yet further if we get those flux linkage amplifiers. And so real quick, I'm gonna go ahead and see about getting another multi-server press and we'll set that up in exactly the same way as we did the previous multi-server press. Just this time around, we will not put in the gear working die. It is gonna require a machine frame, and I do think we're gonna need quite a few machine frames today. So I'm probably going to preemptively request like 32 of these and kind of let our system work on those in the background so that we have them as and when we need them. All right, so not too long later, I've encoded two more patterns and we have a new multi-server press around the corner here. So I'll put the Electrum gear pattern in like so, and we'll put the lead gear pattern in like so. So now we should be able to go ahead and request those flux linkage amplifiers. If I wanted say 10 of them, uh, oh, our system does not know how to make the coils. That thankfully is a super easy recipe for us to encode. And we can whack that in of course into our new 
ME interface. There we go. Let's try that once again. If I want, let's say 10 flux like a amplifiers, start and hopefully that shouldn't take too long. We should see over here electrum plates being made. We do. I did move the integral component over from our centrifugal separator into the new multi servo press again, just to make things that little bit faster. And again, along the same lines, we're going to take our first flux linkage amplifiers and we're going to put those into the multi servo presses to make making the parts that make our centrifugal separator faster, faster, right? Because even if we get three flux linkage amplifiers into the centrifugal separator, which is the maximum that you can put in alongside a resonant integral component, that is still gonna be a maximum of 320 redstone flux per tank that our centrifugal separator can use. And I believe at that point, once we get to using 320 redstone flux per tank, that is gonna be 16 times faster than the initial 20 redstone flux per tank, which is a good upgrade. Uh, but also real quick, what is stopping us from making these? Never mind, Chant is right, of course. Every time the problem is that we are out of space in our drives. There we go. I've thrown a new 16K disk drive in there. I think that was the problem when the system can't import or export because it's full. That starts to cause a whole host of issues. And so real quick, let's try that one more time here. 10 flux linkage amplifiers. We can. Nice. Okay, there was another problem. The flux coil recipe was encoded as a pattern and not as a recipe, but either way, it's done. Cool. So now back over here, we should be able to put these in. One, two, three. One, two, three. And one, two, three, four. You can put a fourth one in, but again, if you want to have the resonant integral component in there as well, then you do have to only have three. And so, as I was saying a second ago, let me request one more of these integral components here. That's going to allow us to get the maximum out of this centrifugal separator. Uh, the maximum being 320 redstone flux per tick. This is 18. This right here has a scale factor of 4x. It multiplies the power usage by four, taking us to 320. At a rate of 320 redstone flux per tick, it is still gonna take 30 days for one centrifugal separator to get us all of the bitumen that we need. And so, Again, much like with our previous B setup, if we want it done in say one day, we need to get 30 of these centrifugal separators with 30 resonant integral components and 90 flux linkage amplifiers. And we need to set them up to all produce bitumen all of the time. And thankfully, I don't think that's gonna be too difficult for us to do. Let me go and grab that. Uh, whoops, let me go grab that uh, integral component here. Also, let me turn the uh, power of my jetpack down a little bit here so we don't uh, whip around too fast. Back over here, this is now using that 320 red stop flux per tick, and it should take, I believe, just over three seconds now for us to turn one bitumen ascend into the bitumen. And it does. Nice. Still got the same chance of producing one or two, so it's still approximately 1.5 per. We now just need to make 29 more of these, as well as 29 more resonant integral components, and uh, 87 more of the flux linkage amplifiers. So, if I wanted 29 more of these, I think we should have everything to make that happen. No blaze is interesting. We do have the ability to make it. I guess our system just doesn't know how to make it. That is fine. Let's try that one more time. 20, 20, 30, 29, start. And then in terms of the flux linkage amplifier, can I get, uh, let's say 90 of those, start. And then finally, of course, we need to make 29 more of these centrifugal separators. This shouldn't be too bad. We did request those machine frames earlier. They are there ready for us to make. I'm just gonna go ahead and make a stack of compasses. I'll make a stack of redstone flux coils. And then from there, we just need a stack of constantan gears. We could have taught our system how to do this, but it will probably have taken us about just as long to teach our system to do it as it's gonna take for us to just take a stack here and throw it into here manually once some of these other recipes are done. And then at that point, I think I'm probably gonna set this up maybe over here, potentially, although this might be a little far away from our nearest channel, but actually I think I should be fine. So I'll probably set up a pillar that goes up of these centrifugal separators. And then I think what we'll do from there is we'll use an exporter like we have here to export our bitumen ascend as fast as we can. And then from there, we'll probably end up using item pipes to distribute all of that send amongst all of the centrifugal separators. That way we don't have to make too many of these export buses, but more importantly, we don't have to use up too many of our channels on our ME controller because we are almost certainly starting to run out of those. And then from there, it's just a case of pulling all of the final products back 
into the system, which again, will have everything go to one centralized location and we'll use an importer to make that happen. Or potentially we could just run an item cable over to our draw controller because we're also gonna want to get a compacting draw for the bitumen so that it auto compacts into the blocks of bitumen because that's what we need in order to make the singularities. There are a few other things to, to think about. Obviously, uh, bitumen is not the only thing that is made. There are a few other byproducts that we are gonna have to work around. Things like tar here need to have a place to go. We'll just set up a draw for that with a void upgrade so that any excess that is made is deleted. Uh, the same is true for sand. We already have a draw and a void upgrade for that. And then finally, there is also the crude oil as well here. Uh, this is important because the crude oil uh, needs to be deleted. If we don't delete it, then it's gonna back up and the system will stop working. And so we are gonna once again have to use a fluid trash can like the one that we have over here to delete all of the excess crude oil that's made so that the system can run smoothly. Chat is right here that we could in fact use universal cable from the pipes mod to extract everything from these machines. These are essentially all in one pipes. They can move items, energy, and fluids all at once. Our constantan gears should be almost done. And so we should be at a point where we can start to make a decent number of these centrifugal separators. Of course, I do need to put actually way more constantan in here. I forget that it's a four to one uh, ratio for the gears. And so let's do this to get yet more of those. And in fact, we could just request them right back over here. Let me put you away, you away. Constantan gears, let me just go ahead and request. Oh no, we didn't teach our system how to make Constantan gears. Never mind. I cannot request that. Let me go bank and put even more of these Constantan ingots in there. And instead, let's just do this and this. Cool. So that's almost all of the centrifugal separators that we need. One more would be ideal. Fantastic. And so let's see. My thought process here is that we can do something kind of like this. And if we get our wand, we can probably build this a tiny bit faster by just using that to place down all of these centrifugal separators going up in a tower that looks something like this. Now, one problem that we might run into, and it would be ideal actually if we got two more of these here, a problem we might run into here is that annoyingly, you can't insert and extract with the same universal pipe. Right now, this is set to insert. If I set it to extract, that means that it extracts fluids, energy, items, and gas. You can't, unfortunately, have it insert energy and extract items, unlike you could with something like end or conduits from past Minecraft versions. That would be super useful. That does mean that we're gonna have to run energy external to this, but I think that's fine. What we can do inside here is we can do something like this. We can set all of these to extract. I actually probably want to change this because I think I want to be able to configure these easily. What I mean by that is that I kind of want them to go down like this, so the front is pointing outwards on all of them. The idea here being that we can set the back here to output for orange. And then what we can do is we can use the red print, I believe it's called, from thermal expansion to uh, copy and paste those settings. So uh, right here, copies and transfer settings between blocks, use on a block to copy its settings. So I think what we want to do here, if I'm not mistaken, is we want to go to the machine that has its settings configured. Let's say this one right here. Again, we'll set the back to output. And I think we shift right click here. No, we right click here. And then we right click on the other machines and then you shift right click to clear. Okay, so you right click on the machine you wanna copy and, uh, and then you can just go right click, right click, right click, right click, right click, right click. And that's just gonna go ahead and copy the same settings to all of these machines. After that, there are other things we want to do, I guess, actually, because this is not all we want, right? We probably also want to set this to input from the left. And I think what we'll probably end up doing is in the middle here, these are all gonna be set to output to the bank, which means here, we can just go ahead and set all of these to extract. And because this can pull both items and fluids, it's gonna pull out all of the correct items and all of the crude oil. We can send the crude oil to a trash can, and then we can run this universal pipe over to our draw controller, and that's gonna send all of the bitumen as well as all of the tar to their own storage drawers. And again, with the void upgrade, that should delete any excess tar that we don't want. And then out on this side, we can use another pipe that we set to input, these ones right here, and we can use these pipes to both send the bitumen a send once we've exported it to a nearby chest, and we can also use it to send power as well because I'm fairly certain that if we were to go ahead and just grab a flux point, we should be able to just put that flux point down directly onto the universal pipe, and it should just start sending power to all of those machines. Ideally, if we don't have too much server lag. Boom, boom, 
and boom. And again, we might need to start to extract, but that should start to fill these guys up with power. It does. We're almost certainly going to have to put an upgrade on this because right now, as you can see at the top, it's only transferring 256 FE per tick, which is nowhere near enough. We need 320 FE per tick per machine. And so there definitely is work to be done here. But for example, we can set this to input on this side and then we can just go ahead again with the red print uh, shift right click and then right click, right click, right click, right click. That's gonna copy the inputs. So now they all input from the left and then we'll do the same here, but just on the other side. So here we'll set uh, this to output at the bank and input on the right. Again, shift right click to clear, right click, 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 like that, cool. And then we'll copy that of course on the other side and we'll have another set of item pipes here or item slash energy pipes here that are gonna do the exact same thing and we can copy the exact same settings. Okay, so not too long later, and I'm just making some more of these pipe upgrades here because over here, this is, I think, basically good to go. So I've decided actually, instead of using an exporter, the one we made earlier, I'm going to instead just use the bituminous sand draw because we don't need to get any more bituminous sand from our bees, and we can instead use that hole in the wall there for another compacting draw that is going to allow us to store the bitumen that comes in which is perfect. So let's do this and this. It also means there's no bottleneck in terms of how fast the exporter can export. I'm sure the exporter could potentially export fast enough for this, but this is quicker and easier and therefore I think better. So real quick, if I do this, this can move 8,190 FE per tick. I have made two more of these centrifugal separators. And by that, I mean, I moved the one that we had over there and made one more. So we do now have 32 of these, if we upgrade each and every one of them, that means that 32 multiplied by 320 is 10,240. So unfortunately, this is not quite fast enough to pull all of the power that we need out and into these machines. So we are gonna have to upgrade that to diamond. I think the same is true here as well. I think we ideally probably want to, it might actually be fast enough here. If I put this in, that's gonna move 16 items every 10 ticks, which is 32 items every second. These each take three seconds to process a send, and so I think that's actually fine. I am gonna change it to round robin so that it kind of distributes these evenly amongst all the machines, but I think a gold upgrade for this is totally fine. Then the final upgrade that needs to be, I think also upgraded to diamond is this one down here. So we have all of the pipes in the middle set to extract. They're gonna go down to this chest right here. The reason I put this chest down is that I didn't want to craft a ton of universal cable. And so I just had the universal cable put into this chest. And then we have this pipe here that is then connected over to our pre-existing line. And that's gonna pull out and around into our draw controller. And I think ideally this one here is also gonna get a diamond pipe upgrade to allow it to move very quickly. Now, the only reason the diamond pipe upgrades have not been made so far is that they require blazing blood. If we want to make this pipe upgrade here, we need five gems and these diamonds do require blazing blood to smelt. Thankfully, we do have some blazing blood in a tank here, quite a bit of it actually. And so we should be able to uh, somewhat easily do this and this, and then we can drop in our 10 diamonds. That is going to allow us to upgrade both of these to diamond tier, which should be a substantial upgrade over the previous tier. We could look at pushing it even further to the ultimate pipe upgrade. Again, requires blazing blood and some molten netherite, but I don't think it's really strictly necessary. I think these diamond upgrades should be more than fast enough. And so once we have those, it's really just a case of installing all of the integral components and all of the flux linkage amplifiers, and then kind of just letting the system do its thing. And of course, the uh, the final, final piece of the puzzle is uh, the fluid trash can as well, because without it, the system will indeed not work. So we'll take that as well. We'll get that connected to the universal cable. We'll take both of these over here. Let's make sure this is nice and fast. That's now doing 32,768 FE per tick, which is more than fast enough. And down here, if we do something like this, that can now pull out 32 items every five ticks, which is two stacks per second. Again, more than fast enough. We just need to make sure that both the bitumen and the tar have a place to go. And so over here, we'll do bitumen like so, and we'll do tar like this, cool. And then finally again, back over here, let's put this down up at the top like that to get all of the fluids out. And then from there, we just have to go through and make sure that each and every one of these machines has an integral component. I think right now, the one that we moved over uh, from the other side of the base should already have one. And so we should have enough integral components here to fill all these up and enough flux and amplifiers to fill almost all of them up. We do have um, only 90 and I think we need 96 now that we have 32 of these. And it also looks like we are in fact one integral component shy. That is 
completely fine. We can request one more of those. And whilst we wait for that to come in, I'm going to go ahead and install all of these Flux linkage amplifiers. Speaking of which, let me request uh, like another 10 of those as well. Always good to have a few extra. All right, so now every single one of these has a resonant integral component and it has three Flux linkage amplifiers. And so we should hopefully see this number here start to go down slowly but surely. And I guess more importantly, over here, we should start to see the amount of bituminous blocks going up. And it is. Cool. Again, we need 141,000. It looks like it's going up by about one per second. Let me quickly check and make sure there's not a bottleneck down here. I don't think there should be. There isn't. That's all getting extracted nice and quick. It also does appear that all of the crude oil is also being sent up and deleted fast enough as well. And it also appears that uh, all of these machines are being fully uh, saturated with bitumen of sand. So there's no bottleneck on this pipe and they all have power as well. So there's no bottleneck over here. Again, a quick check over here, actually. How are we doing on power? We are ever so slightly losing power, although I think that's because we have auto mode turned on. And I think once it falls below 70%, it should kick back in and power should come back online again. We can also export more uh, redstone, coal, and potentially ice to this if we do need to get more power. But I think power should be doing just fine. And so now that all of that is done, we can kind of untake bitumen that is on its way. We now just need to focus on these last four. And as I mentioned earlier, these are mostly just crafts. For example, we can just do this and this. That's going to encode the craft for the prismarine bricks if we go and throw that into one of our ME interfaces. The only question then really is if we can request 141,000 of these prismarine bricks. I have a feeling that we might have enough resources. We don't, we're still a little shy on the prismarine. We need 300,000 more. That's fine, I'm, I'm confident that will come in. Uh, let me try 100,000 then. The next problem of course is, uh, is bytes used. This uh, costs 1.1 million. Again, not a huge deal. I think we can probably just do that in batches. Again, given how fast our system is, we could request uh, potentially 40,000 here. And I'm hopeful oh, it's just a little bit over. Let's try 37,000. That does indeed work. Start. Cool. So that's going to come in, hopefully, somewhat quickly. We could put another couple, actually, of ME interfaces on here if we really wanted to saturate this, which is probably not a bad idea. Now that I mention it, if we get, um, and by interfaces, I mean molecular assemblers, of course, if we get three more of these, we can take the uh, acceleration cards that we already have in abundance, and we can put down these guys around that pre-existing crafter here, here, and here. And again, if we make sure that all of these have got the maximum number of acceleration cards, that's going to basically double the speed at which these can be made. And now this makes this our fastest ME interface. And so, yeah, that's going to take a minute <laughs> to get done, but it's on its way. The same is kind of true for bone meal here. Uh, I don't know how many bones we have. We've got 723,000 bones. There are a few options here. We do have to teach it how to turn bone meal into bone blocks. That's fine. And then in terms of making the bone meal, we could go ahead and use this recipe right here. We could also use a pulverizer, which is slightly more efficient, but given that it's only one extra, I think this is gonna be way faster, just teaching our system and encoding that pattern. Let's put that into the same crafter over here. Of course, we're not gonna be able to do both crafts simultaneously, but just to get an idea of if we have enough burns, can I request 141,000 burn blocks? We can, we've got more than enough bones to make that happen, and so we can go pick up the skeleton bee if we want. That's all good. I'm going to unbookmark the bone singularity. I'm going to unbookmark the prismarine singularity. So now it's just netherite and conduits. Again, conduits also not really an issue. The conduit singularity here just requires that we encode this recipe and drop it into our ME interface, let's say here. And then from there, it's just a case of requesting that our system make 141,000 conduits, which I'm confident we have enough resources to do. We don't. That actually surprises me. We're missing 129,000 Nautilus shells. And I actually think that that must be a bad miscalculation on my part because I think I picked up the um, the CB. Let me go get the CB back into its apiary because apparently we are, uh, we're not quite there. The CB, I think, was here. Is that the C1? No, that's Blizz. The CB goes in here. Boom, boom, we'll put that back down. That's gonna keep processing. And again, I'm confident we'll get all of the items required for that. And then finally, it's the uh, the netherite singularity. Between streams, I have been uh, slowly but surely requesting netherite blocks. We're at 5,310 netherite blocks, which means we need about 135,000 more. And for that, we are a little light on stuff. So I'm confident that we'll get 
the ancient debris. We're only missing 167,000 ancient debris here. The gold, though, is a different question. We have 2.3 million. We need a further 2.4 million. And then on top of that, we also need another 1.3 million to get the 141,000 gold blocks. So we're quite low on gold to the point where we're probably going to have to do some bee exchanging where we maybe take out the draconian bees from these bee apartments and potentially replace them with a staggering number of gold bees to try and get all that gold we're going to need. Um, I don't think I mentioned it in the last episode, by the way, but we have been using these bee breeders to get all of these bees. I didn't manually breed all the bees here. Instead, we set up these breeders, and it turns out it is faster to use the breeding upgrades over the speed upgrades because you just get to do more of them at the same time, especially if you have a way of easily getting more and more of these uh, of these bees. Once you have a lot of them and you have a lot of the resource to breed them, having more of these breeder upgrades is faster than having these breed time upgrades in the long run. So that's how we've been doing it. And that's what I'll do for the gold bees as well. I'll get even more of those so we can kind of fill that up. But now, essentially, outside of waiting for things to craft and requesting them as and when they're needed, uh, this is actually coming along quite nicely, we now, of course, need to get the quantum singularities and we need to set them up so they can actually start making singularities for us because these are also not instantaneous in fact if we look at any of these singularities each one of course requires 3,000 items which we have to export to that quantum compressor but we also need to send 5,000 redstone flux to take to each quantum compressor and the craft itself requires 5 million fe and so if we do 5 million divided by 5,000, that is 1,000. So it's going to take 1,000 ticks per craft, which if you divide that by 20, because there are 20 ticks per second, that's 50 seconds per singularity. Again, we need 47 singularities, uh, which means that it is going to take about 40 minutes per type of singularity, which again, if we were to just use one quantum compressor for that, means that we would have to multiply that 40 minutes by the 78 singularities required, which is 3,055 minutes, which is... 127 hours, a bit too many hours. And so we definitely do want to have multiple quantum compressors working on this so that we can bring that 127 hours down to something a bit more palatable. Now, the trouble we run into if we try and do too many quantum compressors is power, because in terms of making them, I could request all 78 of them and we could make those right now. We have the resources to do it. The trouble is that if we were to try and power 78 quantum compressors all at the same time, that would require 390,000 redstone flux per tick. And right now, we're only generating 34,000. We could eke out a little bit more power by upgrading our spirited reactor here to nitro, but I don't think it's going to be anywhere near enough to bump us up by a factor of 10. Because you'll see here, the generation factor goes from 3.8 to 5.4. That's not going to take us from 34,000 redstone flux per tick to, to 390,000 redstone flux per tick. And so instead, I think we'll start with 16 here, and I think we'll see how it goes. 16 multiplied by 5,000 is 80,000 RF per tick, which I think is much more reasonable. It's also more reasonable on the Emmy channels front as well, because I do think that we're going to have to put down an Emmy exporter for every single one of these quantum compressors, and then potentially also an importer to pull them in, although I think we'll probably just grab those manually for now because they're coming in quite slowly anyway. And so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to bring these uh, a little shorter so I can make it a bit more symmetrical maybe. In fact, what I might do is I might do this in kind of lines this way. If we do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we can then do a gap and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then a gap and then one, two, and then we could also fill some more in if we wanted to. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make a bunch of ME export buses, put those down like that. I'll probably run a fresh dense cable off of our controller over towards this area here so that we can guarantee we have 16 channels spare. And then one thing we do have to do is we do have to make 16 of these Ender Enhanced Catalysts. These shouldn't be too difficult. The black iron we have in abundance, the luminescence and black iron slates we can make. The Ender Enhanced ingots are a little expensive, but again, it really shouldn't be too difficult for us to do that. It's just a case of working with the smeltery and our Ender Crafter over here to make that work. And we'll go ahead, fill every single one of these up with at least one Ender Catalyst. Again, this is not used, it is reusable, which is good. And we'll make sure that every one of these has an exporter on top. And we'll also probably get an individual flux point for each one of these as well, so that we can begin making 16 of the 78 required singularities. All right, so not too long later, and we now have an enhanced Ender Catalyst in every single one of these quantum compressors, so 16 in total. We did end up making a lot more of these Ender Alternators to make this somewhat 
reasonably fast because it was very, very, very slow before. Uh, and we did set up a little bit of automation over here to automate the production of the ender ingots. Essentially, we've got a pipe here that takes iron ingots and pumps them into the casting table. We've got a lever on here, so the uh, ender pearl gets automatically pulled out, the ender pearl liquid that is, gets automatically pulled out. And then over here, we have another item pipe that pulls out of the side of the seared casting table up and into this drawer so that we can just dump iron into here, dump ender pearls into here, and we get automatic ender ingots. Cool. And instead of making the ME exporters, again, much like we did over here, the Twitch chat did recommend just moving the compacting drawers over, which I think is probably a sensible idea given that basically everything we need to make is in compacting drawers. And so I think we'll look at the list and I was gonna say, we'll maybe start at the top and work down. However, we don't actually have enough rotten flesh to make this because we ran into the same issue with rotten flesh that we did with bones in that my rotten flesh was still in this drawer and was getting deleted because we'd hit the max. And so I've set up a new compacting drawer over here. So more rotten flesh is coming in. Again, give it a day or so that should fill up with the 141,000 that we need. It does mean though that for now, we're gonna have to kind of skip the rotten flesh and start after that. But I think what we'll do is we'll kind of go ahead and grab the, the next 16 compacting drawers, starting with Constantin. Uh, the tricky part then is finding it. I think Constantin's one that we made kind of a little later on in the pack. It's right here. I believe we have over 141,000 Constantin blocks. We do, we've got 269,000. And for us, it's just a case of kind of stealing this, bringing it over to here, putting it down like this, and then setting this to extract. That's gonna to start to fill this up with blocks of Constantin, which is perfect. Of course, we are going to want to make probably quite a few more of these item pipes so we can pull out faster. Although there is a, um, a delay, of course, of 50 seconds between when you fill it up for the first time and when it makes the first singularity. And so we don't need to go super fast, I don't think. We just need to be fast enough to where it takes less than 50 seconds to move all of the items down. Once all of these are moved down, it's then gonna go ahead and start using the 5,000 redstone flux per tick to turn those 3,000 blocks of Constantin into a singularity. And while it does that, we're gonna let it fill up on another 3,000 blocks, rinse and repeat. And so, yeah, let's go ahead and move the next 15 compacting drawers over and get potentially 15 more of those pipe upgrades, which is gonna be at 30 emeralds smelted over in the smeltery. All right, so I've picked 16 compacting drawers out of the list here. I went ahead and bookmarked every single singularity. And then as I've pulled these items off the wall, I've gone ahead and unbookmarked the singularities. So uh, slime steel and glowstone are both the last two that I put on there. And so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave these to do their thing. And as soon as we have 47 of a given singularity, we can then take the draw, put it back in the wall, pick a different draw, bring it back over to the quantum compressor and kind of just keep going, rinse and repeat until we have all of the singularities that we need. In theory, we have to do it about five times for each one of these quantum compressors because we have 78 singularities in total that we need to get 47 of. And there are 16 quantum compressors here. 78 divided by 16 is just under five. So we have to do each of these five times to get all of the singularities. And yeah, we do have some slight issues over here. This uh, coal drawer is pulling out blocks of compressed coal and we need to pull out blocks of regular coal, which is not ideal. Uh, we can filter the pipe, but to do that, we have to upgrade the pipe upgrade to a higher tier. Thankfully over here, we should be able, if the uh, server lag ever permits it, we should be able to, uh, to drop this in and do something like this again, uh, again, using the blazing blood that we have to get us another diamond pipe upgrade. And that diamond pipe upgrade, thankfully, does have filtering capabilities. So as soon as we take this, we can put that into the exact same slot like that. At uh, this time though, we just need to go to add and then put the block of coal in and submit. Cool. And then now it's only going to pull the blocks of coal down. It is also going to pull them faster as well, uh, making this quantum compressor slightly faster than the rest of them. Again, it's going to take approximately 40 minutes to get the 47 singularities that we need. That's assuming no downtime between each singularity. As you can see, there is downtime. Our pipes are not so fast as to move things instantaneously. And so it's probably gonna take slightly longer than that for us to actually get all of the singularities for all of the resources that we have. And so I guess, chat, what I'm gonna do between streams is kind of the slightly tedious uh, task of moving all of these over as and when the quantum compressors are ready and also as and when we have enough resources. Most of these are either there or very close to being there. There are a couple that are not quite there. Uh, what I'll probably also do between streams is look at redistributing the bees as well. Like whilst I wait for this stuff to come in, I'm probably gonna go ahead and grab 
a lot of the dragon and awakened draconian bees i'll probably take those back into jars to kind of reduce some of the lag because the frame rate is horrible and i'll probably also replace them with some bees that we need like gold bees we know we need a lot of those and potentially any other bees that were a little light on resources for like any other resource that were a little low on forgetting all of the singularities i'll also periodically keep requesting things like the prismarine and we've also set up a drop here for the bone blocks as well we need uh, 141,000 bone blocks thankfully the bone meal gets turned directly into bone blocks and so all we have to do is just request the bone meal so if i request uh, 225,000, i think was the number we did last time and click next and stop that's going to go ahead and start turning all our bones into bone meal all the bone meal gets put directly into that drawer which automatically turns it into bone blocks which you can see is going up there and so yeah i'm going to take the bees down i'm going to keep my eye on these singularities and i'm going to also keep requesting the things that we need specifically the bone blocks the prismarine blocks and of course the conduits as well those also need requesting there are also a few other little oddities like over here there is a salt singularity the salt singularity needs salt blocks however annoyingly it needs a different kind of salt block than the salt block that we're getting right here it requires the salt block from mechanism whereas in our drawer here we have the salt block from j-a-o-p-c-a which is a different salt block the good news is is that this salt block is like bigger the one from mechanism is a two by two this one here is a three by three and so we have enough salt it just means we have to craft all of our salt into a different salt format before we can use it in the quantum compressors which is a bit of a pain but again it's something that we can request and get done fairly easily and so hopefully chat next time we'll come back and we will hopefully have the vast majority if not all of the singularities required to make the ultimate singularities that we need we're definitely not going to have a sum of them uh, for example we're not going to have all of the netherite singularities because again my plan is still to get the creative tank first and then to use that to get the uh, remainder of the netherite singularities once we have that up and running but almost everything else here i think should be pretty straightforward again we've already got all of the nether stars we've got all of the dragon eggs now we are waiting on awakened draconium but it's coming in pretty quickly and so we should have that you know within the next few hours potentially the next day so that should not be too difficult and next time chat we'll come back and we'll look at getting the ultimate ingots here we only need 232 of these most of the resources we have it's kind of all the same resources that we're using for the singularities the only thing we don't have is this block of Valdanium, which is going to be a bit of work and might also benefit from a creative tank. Uh, but whether or not we want to go through the effort of making two creative tanks is kind of yet to be seen. And then once we have all of the ultimate singularities and all of the ultimate hits, we can finally turn our sights onto actually crafting the creative items here. That is the whole point of all of this, but that is a problem for future Isaac. For now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode of Sky Bees 2. There.